Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for another franchise ranking video today. And today, guys, I'm going to be ranking another animated movie franchise. This time, it's a franchise by DreamWorks, which is the Shrek movies. So, yeah, now, so I got done what I got. I got done watching this franchise earlier this year, guys, because I watched all the movies on Netflix. And yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite DreamWorks franchises of all time. Yeah, and um, you know. I enjoy all these movies so much, guys. You know, I really, you know, love the series. Except for one of them, which we're going to get to in the ranking. But yeah, anyway, so. So this ranking will include all four Shrek movies. And at the end, as a bonus, I will talk about the spin-off, Puss in Boots. And why I play that my ranking. So yeah, now. So let's begin ranking with Shrek movies. So this will be from best to worst, in my personal opinion, guys. So if you guys don't scream, that's absolutely fine. But please respect my opinion, just like I respect yours. Okay, so here we go. Now, starting with um, what is easily my favourite uh, movie in this franchise, guys, and 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 one that I think is the best and will never ever be topped by any of the movies, it is definitely none other than Shrek 2, released in 2004. So, yeah, now, now this movie is one that I really love, and it's definitely as well my second favourite movie ever made by, by DreamWorks. Um, the first one will become the Panda 2, but this is my second favourite, and, yeah, I just really love this movie, guys. You know, um, it's definitely such a great movie. And, you know, I don't see any bad quality with it at all, in my opinion. Because I just love it. So, let's talk about, about what I love. So, um, so the first thing that I like to talk about is definitely the voice cast. Because, you know, I think the entire voice cast does an absolutely phenomenal job of this movie. So, for example, um, Mike Myers provided a voice of Shrek. And he gave such a very strong performance as Shrek in this movie. And, yeah, he was really amazing in the role. It's my definitely my favourite voice role that he's played, absolutely. And my favourite role of him as well, definitely, because I've not seen any of the roles he's played other than this one as Shrek, so he's definitely Shrek for me, yeah. And I do also definitely really love Eddie Murphy as Donkey. And this is definitely my favourite voice role of Eddie Murphy, absolutely. My favourite live action role, probably King Joe Furring coming to America now, because he's, he's the king now, yeah, from the second film. This is definitely my favourite voice role, because he's so funny and definitely perfectly cast, in my opinion, you know, as Donkey. I also loved Cameron Diaz as as Princess Fiona. Um, she's definitely another perfect casting as Fiona. She's really amazing, you know. And I love her chemistry with Shrek as well. It's really great. And yeah, you know, those are like, you know, the top three main characters. And I definitely love them. And um, other characters in this movie. Uh, I also love the introduction of, of John Cleese and Julie Andrews, who provide the voices of Fiona's parents. So yeah. And, uh, you know, they were definitely also perfectly cast, in my opinion, as their characters. Um, absolutely. You know, they played them so well, you know. King Harold, at first he was a bit silly, in my opinion. You know, not really likeable, in, in my opinion. But as movie progressed, I began to like him a lot more and more. And he became one of my favourite, you know, characters in the franchise. And definitely one of my best father figures I've ever seen in a movie. And Julie Andrews was also perfectly cast as Queen Lillian. That's definitely her voice role she's played, absolutely. And um, I also, as well, do love of um, the the introduction of, of one of my favourite new characters in the franchise, which is Puss in Boots, voiced by Antonio Banderas. And yeah, Antonio, in my opinion, was so perfectly cast as Puss in Boots, and great comic relief, you know, amazing. Probably like the best addition to a movie, because he was so entertaining, and yeah. I do also believe he provided the voice for Puss in Boots in several dubs, such as in Spanish, Italian, and Japanese, which is pretty pretty good talent, in my opinion. Pretty good. Which is uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, they provided, you know, the dub for Puss in Boots in other languages. Pretty cool talent. And um, I also, as well, uh, love the introduction of the villain, which is um, Jennifer Saunders as a fairy godmother. Like, a fairy godmother is definitely easily my favourite Shrek villain ever. So menacing and, you know, evil. Perfect, in my opinion. Love a fairy godmother. And I also like Rupert Everett as well as Prince Charming as well, yeah. He was definitely really good in this movie. And this is the only movie that I like him in, to be honest, as well, guys. Absol like, I like her way... I, I like him way more in this movie, to be honest. So, yeah. What I also do love about the movie is also um, Comrade Vernon as, as the gingerbread man. Uh, because, you know, I like how he had a much bigger role in this movie compared to, you know, the first movie, which I really appreciated. So, yeah. Because he was pretty good and... Um, 
I also think the animation is also phenomenal, and for 2004 movie cards, it does hold up to this day, in my opinion. Absolutely breathtaking animation. Really amazing, and definitely improvement from the first movie, because some of the animation, in my opinion, didn't, didn't hold up very well, but yeah. I also, as well, really, really loved the music as well in this movie, which was composed by Harry Gregson Williams. Absolutely beautiful music. So great to listen to. And the story was also really perfect as well. I really love the story. And I also love the introduction of, of a new place which is far, far away, which is basically like, you know, a medieval fairy tale version of Hollywood, which was very creative and very well made, like really impressive. I definitely love that. Like that was just brilliant. And also, the final act of the movie, guys, is definitely one of my favourite final acts I've ever, ever seen. Like, it was just brilliant, guys. Absolutely wonderful in every way. I loved it. Really amazing. And yeah, so it's definitely my favourite Shrek movie of all time. You know, great animation, strong performance by the entire voice cast. Best villain, in my opinion, as well. The music was also beautiful. Introducing Puss in Boots, my favourite comic relief addition to the cast. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. And yeah, really great. And the final act was also the best part for me. I just loved it so much. I really loved it. And so if you want to give this movie out of 10, I'll give this movie a flat out 10 out of 10. It's my favourite Shrek movie. And my second favourite Dream Wars movie after, after Kumbu Panda 2. Now we go on to what is my second favourite Shrek movie, which is the first one, Shrek from 2001, 20 years ago. Wow. So what I like of this is, you know, this is also another example of a great movie in the franchise. Absolutely. May not be as good as Shrek 2, because I don't really add up to it, in my opinion, but the good qualities is the voice acting is still really strong, especially for Mike Myers as Shrek, Eddie Murphy as Donkey, and Cameron Diaz as Princess Fiona. And there's, there's many other also great casting as well, in my opinion. For example, I did like John Lithgow as, as a villain called Lord Farquaad. Like, he was pretty good as Farquaad, in my opinion, um, with what he was given. Um, although Farquaad didn't really have very much screen time, in my opinion. And, but yeah, he was still pretty great. So yeah. Um, and it, it was pretty good, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was really funny and entertaining. The humour was brilliant. And the, and, uh, the visuals for the time were also pretty good. Although, in my opinion, guys, one bad quality is that some of the animation didn't really hold up very well. Oh, to be honest, you know, the lighting and stuff like that, unfortunately. But it was still an entertaining movie. You know, I, I did love it. And um, I especially love the music as well, which was composed um, by... Harry Grayson Williams with John Powell, and um, I especially love the opening music called, you know, Fairy Tale, like, and that was, of course, later used as the intro for DreamWorks movies, so, yeah, it was a beautiful choice, like, really great. However, when it comes to bad qualities, the reason why I prefer the second movie of this one is because, like I said, I think the lighting needed a bit of improvement in some animation, and um, plus, I think Lord Farquaad isn't as memorable as I prefer Godmother, in my opinion, despite a great performance by John Lithgow. And, and I also didn't like how a gingerbread, gingerbread man only had a cameo appearance, guys. Like, I wanted him to have more screen time. Like, I was hoping he'd have more screen time than, it, than his just one scene. But, yeah. Because I don't remember him putting in other scenes besides that one. But, yeah. And also, one other bad quality about, you know, Lord Farquaad is that, you know, um, this has been, like, you know, a bit of a popular meme among people. But, you know, apparently his name sounds like a swear word if you say it really fast. But, yeah. I'm not going to attempt to do that. Speaking of, you know, bad language, I also didn't like as well how um, there was also a swear word that was mentioned in this movie. Um, so, yeah, where Shrek called Donkey something. And, yeah, I didn't really like how he called him that in a kid's movie. And uh, if you're wondering what it is, guys, he called him a jackass. So, yeah, he called him a jackass. So, yeah, pretty inappropriate, in my opinion, you know, for a children's movie. So, yeah. But... I can let this bad quality slide because it's easily my second favourite in the franchise, guys. And I give this movie a 9 out of 10. And now we get on to what is uh, my third favourite in the franchise, which is Shrek Forever After, released in 2010. So, yeah, now, um, so this movie is, a, is of course, the fourth one. And in my opinion, guys, it should definitely be the final one in the franchise. Um, but, yeah, it may not be as epic as, you know, Shrek 1 or 2. But it's definitely a major improvement over what we're going to get to next. But yeah, so the good qualities is, once again, the voice acting by the cast is still amazing as always. For example, Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz, and Sonia Banderas were still amazing in their roles. Definitely liked them, and yeah. I also, as well, liked the introduction of Rumpelstiltskin, the villain of the movie. 
Like, he was pretty insane in by Walt Doran. He was pretty good. Although, my, my favourite one with Stewart Skin Ball guys has to be Robert Carlyle from the show Once Upon a Time. But, yeah, I thought um, Walt, Walt Doran was really good as well in this movie. And, yeah. I also like John Hammer's Brog and the Yorga as well. Oh, he was pretty good. And in my opinion, the story was also much better than, you know, um, Shrek the Third because it's all about, you know, Shrek um, wanting to, you know, have a life back to being an ogre wh where he signed a contract by Rumpel that released the disastrous consequences and in all sort of timeline. The also time my, my opinion was pretty strange. Like, for example, I was pretty, I was, I was caught off guard by seeing Puss in Boots being overweight and all. It was pretty shocking, really. But yeah, and so my nose was still great, as in nonetheless. And yeah. I also liked um, the other augurs, like I already mentioned Brog, and I also liked Jane Lynch as Gretchen, and, and also Craig Robinson as Cookie, the augur. Like, they were pretty likeable augurs, in my opinion. And I like as well how the movie included a flashback of Queen Lillian and King Harold as well, in a flashback, uh, because they couldn't really be in the movie, well, King Harold couldn't be in the movie properly, because, oh yeah, this is onto bad quality of the previous movie, which we're going to get to. But yeah. This movie was still good because uh, the music was also like, amazing by Harry Gregson Williams again. And also, I also think the humour was also funnier this time as well. And, you know, um, and in my opinion, guys, the scene where, you know, Shrek begins to fade away from existence now that and was, in my opinion, the perfect ending of a franchise, you know, where he tells Fiona that he got to fall in love with her again the best part of the day. And then it ends with, with a party, at, you know, at his August birthday party. You know, that was, you know, pretty... Perfect, in my opinion, the, the best ending of a franchise. Like, you know, this is why, guys, I don't want them to make a, a fifth movie, which is a portly in development, apparently. But, yeah, I personally don't want them to do one because I think this this movie ended the franchise perfectly. You know, where Shrek is celebrating his family in, you know, and they have a birthday party. But, yeah. On to bad qualities. Um, I did not like the scene where at the start where Shrek lashed out at Fiona at a party saying that he wished he never met her and that he was being an ogre again. Like, that really annoyed me. Like, I don't I don't know why he had to say that, you know. I mean, he was on a bad day, but he could have, you know, tried to, you know, control what he said, in, in my opinion. But, yeah, I didn't like how he lashed out like that. And also, the whole idea of, you know, alternate reality, you know, go back in time and whatever, is ripping off other movies like, you know, Back to the Future, for example. But, yeah. I can level up by quality side because, you know, um, it may not be as unoriginal as the first two movies, in my opinion, or... Or as good as them. But I give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. So, and in my opinion, guys, that is definitely the true ending. I mean, for one thing, one of the titles it's called is the final chapter. So, so that's probably the answer to, as it being the last movie or not. It is the last movie, in my opinion. And now, oh, God. Now, we get on to what is, in my opinion, the number one worst Shrek movie of all time. And for me, my least favorite movie of all time, which is definitely the worst one in my opinion, is definitely Shrek the Third from 2007. And I'm thinking, oh my God. This movie was a massive, massive disappointment compared to the first two movies. Like, I cannot believe after seeing what, were my, what was my favorite movie, we, we got my least favorite. So yeah, like, I don't know what happened with this movie, guys. I really don't know what happened to it. You know, what a massive disappointment this was. So, yeah, now, um, I, I'm going to try and get through the gold quarties first. So, um, I will say that some of the voice acting is still good, like for Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz and Antonio Banderas, and Julie Andrews and John Cleese. And also, the visuals and the animation is, I mean, the animation gets better and better each movie, and it definitely improved compared to the first two movies, but, you know, that's not really saying much. And the music by Harry by um, Harry Williams was, was still really good. The music by him was still really good. I loved his music in these movies. And this one was definitely no exception because it was still really good despite not liking this movie very much. And um, I also as well liked um, the introduction of Eric Idle as Merlin. Like in my opinion, he was the funniest ca new character. He was really entertaining. And yeah, probably the only new character I liked in the movie, guys. So yeah. And I also thought it was pretty cool how Seth Rogen made a camera appearance as a sailor. Like, I didn't know it was him until I saw the credits. Like, I was thinking, really, that was Seth Rogen? Wow. I didn't recognise him. But yeah, Seth Rogen was my favourite comedians, but of course, my personal favourite voice was a lot of his well in Mantis in the Kung Panda movies. So, yeah. 
Um, but on to bad qualities. Oh, God, I, I don't know where to begin with, with why this movie just failed compared to the others and why it was a massive letdown. Okay. I think, you know, like, when it comes to humour, guys, like, I did not laugh once, you know, when it comes to the humour uh, they tried to execute, I mean, apart from Merlin scenes, like, it didn't make me laugh, the humour they tried to do without, you know, Merlin. You know, it just wasn't funny. So, yeah, and also, there was also a scene, in my opinion, which was really, really stupid, which was, which was King Harold's death scene. Like... I really hated how they gave us several fake deaths before he died for real. Like, whoever thought of that, like, what were you thinking? Seriously, that was just so stupid. Like, wasn't funny at all. Like, I was just sat there thinking, I was questioning what on earth I was even watching when I saw this movie the first time, when he died. I hated that death scene. Like, King Hal deserved way better than that. Like, I don't know why they had to, you know, do that. Give him such a horrible, horrible send-off. <sighs> I did not like that. And also, you guys will, of course, be aware that, you know, um, that, you know, Shrek and Fiona do have children at the end of the movie, you know, Augurs, so yeah, and Shrek. This is on another movie that I also see my hate in the movie, which, which was definitely Shrek's Nightmare. Like, oh, God, it was so cringy seeing it. And also, don't even get me started on... on on Donkey getting an auger head and saying, da da to Shrek. Like, oh, God. So cringy. I hated that. Like, that was just not funny at all. Like, like when I watched a movie and he, he did that, I was, like, thinking, like, what was that? Seriously. Oh, God. Like, that was just unnecessary. Really was. But I give this movie Polly's unnecessary as well. Also, as well, um, when it comes to the new characters, I did not like the casting of, of Justin Timberlake as as Artie or Arthur, you know, because I'm pretty certain, guys, that Arthur is British, and for some weird reason, Justin Timberlake used an American accent playing him. So, like, why are you doing that? Arthur is not American. He's British. Like, seriously? And Artie was also really annoying as well, guys. I did not like Artie at all. Like I said, the only new character I liked was Merlin, and that was it. And when it comes to villains, oh, God, right? Compared to the second movie, Prince Charming was such a terrible villain in this movie. Did not like him one bit. His motivation when he wants revenge for, for his mother's defeat was fine, but, you know, it was horribly executed, in my opinion. Such a terrible villain, and, you know... And when it comes to you know, other cast members, get this, guys. Um, Captain Hook is voiced by Ian McShane, and, you know... I personally did not like Captain Hook. He was so generic and boring and uninteresting, you know. Finally, in terms of voice work, Ian McShane redeemed himself years later when he, when he voiced Ty Lung in uh, Kung Fu Panda. Although he didn't have much screen time of that movie, he, he, you know, a year later. Uh, he was still really good when he was given. Much better than this role, in my opinion, when he went to and what he was given. I just did not like him in this movie, to be honest, as Captain Hook, because Captain Hook didn't interest me at all. But yeah. So, yeah, uh, like I said, guys, you know, this is definitely my least favorite movie of all time. I, I did not like it. And in my opinion, it was unnecessary. Like, because unless you exclude the fact that, that, that you know, um, King Howard has died, you could probably skip this movie and, and go straight to, right to Shrek Forever After because that, in my opinion, is the true, you know, third movie, in my opinion. So, yeah. Although I'd probably have to, have to, you know, insert, you know, King Howard's death scene in that movie, you know, to make sense. Or I'd have to, I'll definitely execute it way better than how we did it in this movie. Because the way we did it in this movie was just horrible and, and stupid. Wasn't funny. And yeah, just absolutely horrible way to send off a great character in the second movie. But yeah, so despite those bad qualities, like I said, the good quality is, is the voice acting and animation. But, you know, by most of the cast and also Merlin and the music as well. But yeah, because of bad qualities, I gave this movie a 4 out of 10. You know, what a massive letdown. And it might be one of the worst Dreamworks movies I've ever seen. But it's probably even worse ones, maybe, but I'm not sure. So, anyway, guys. So, that's me, me ranking the Shrek movies, all four of them now. When it comes to Puss in Boots, even though it's not a Shrek movie, you probably won't have think of it. Well, well, I really enjoyed it. You know, I thought it was really entertaining. Antonio Banderas had, it, had you know, shined so well in this movie. Movie as, as Puss in Boots. And um, 
I like the other cast as well. Like, like I like Salma Hayek as Kitty Soft Paws. I my favorite role she's played. You know, she's definitely wearing that in that role when it's age like in Eternals. Absolutely. And yeah. But it wasn't as good as the first two track movies, in my opinion. Um, because, you know, it wasn't really much of a Humpty Dumpty that much. But yeah. Um, still, despite that, I give it an 8 out of 10. It's easily my third favourite in this franchise after the first two track movies. So yeah, now. Anyway, guys, so that's me doing my Shrek ranking from best to worst. So, first place is Shrek 2. Second place is Shrek. Third place will be Puss in Boots. Um, fourth place will be Shrek Forever After. And in fifth place, definitely in last place for me, would have to definitely be Shrek the Third, or as I call it, Shrek the Third, because I hate it. Now, guys, um, when it comes to, you know, Puss in Boots, there is going to be a sequel to, you know, the first Puss in Boots spin-off, which is, you know... I'm definitely looking forward to it, you know, which uh, they should definitely do more Puss in Boots movies instead of doing, you know, um, instead of doing, you know, Shrek movies, in my opinion. And so, yeah, because, you know, oh, I think, because I, I personally think that, you know, um, that, uh, you know, that Shrek definitely ended up perfectly with Shrek forever after, but, you know, Puss in Boots, uh, The Last Wish is definitely something I'll be looking forward to. It's, it's set to be released on September 23rd next year. Hopefully it won't be delayed, hopefully. And, yeah. Unfortunately, though, guys, there has been loads of reports that they're going to, going to be making a fifth Shrek movie, which I'm not happy about because, you know, um, because, like I said, Shrek After to me is definitely how the franchise should have ended, perf you know, and I like to consider this to be the true ending of Shrek. And, yeah. So, yeah, and um, I also as well have your iffy thoughts as well, not just because I think it's unnecessary, but also because Cameron Diaz has also retired from acting as well, guys, and... I don't think anyone can voice Princess Fiona better than her, in my opinion. So, yeah. So, I just hope that they, you know, don't do a fifth movie, really. So, yeah, because... Because, in my opinion, the best ending was from, was from Forever After. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, guys. So, that's me doing my Shrek ranking from best to worst, in my personal opinion. So, you know, drill, guys. Um, Be sure to give this video a like. Also, be sure to in the comments how you guys would rank the Shrek movies. You guys would rank them. Um, also, be sure to join the team by press the subscribe and views from the future. If you'd like to be a member, you can press join using PC alerts or you can click on the description. And I'll see you all later.